Hello, my name is Dr. And I'm going to discuss the histology of the cardiovascular um, system. Histology of the cardiovascular system. So, um, you need to know uh, what forms the cardiovascular system. So, blood will move from the heart to the arteries, from the arteries to arterioles that branch out to form capillaries. So, capillaries is where at the tissue level where exchange of gas and um, nutrients and metabolites occurs, and then capillaries thereafter will um, converge to form venules, and from venules, blood will move to the veins, then back to the heart. So, apart from um, cardiovascular system, so the circulatory system, you have cardiovascular, these are for what form the cardiovascular system. And you also have the lymphovascular system. So you have blind-ended lymphatic capillaries that collect lymph fluid from tissues. So tissues will have lymph fluid, which will be collected from lymphatic capillaries. Then this will join and unite. Later on, you form larger lymphatic vessels. And this will connect and empty the lymph into the large veins in the neck and return back to the heart. So lymph that they carry will eventually go back to the heart. Remember, you have the thoracic um, duct on the right. Go back to the lecture video on mediastinum. There's a discussion there on the thoracic duct, how it moves from the right to the left side at the sternal angle to empty into the the um, the superior vena cava. Okay. So we have the um, arterial and venous system that form the cardiovascular circulation and you can also divide it into two loops systemic loops in the body and pulmonary loop so from the right atrium to right ventricle to the lungs so as it goes to the lung that's the pulmonary loop from the lung through pulmonary vein back to the left atrium then left ventricle to the aorta then to the body so from the left ventricle to the aorta and to the rest part of the body that's a systemic loop until when it comes back to the right atrium so um, this is what we are talking about so from right atrium blood goes to right ventricle then from there through sorry right atrium to right ventricle through pulmonary arteries to the lungs from the lungs through pulmonary veins to the left atrium, left ventricle, through the aorta, to the vessels, back to the heart, through the vena cava. So you have systemic loop this side and the pulmonary loop on the other side. So the general structure of blood vessels, histology of blood vessels. Blood vessels have an inner tunica intima, followed by tunica media and tunica adventitia. So those are the three layers of blood vessel, tunica intima, media, and adventitia. So how do you discuss each of these layers? Tunica intima has a simple squamous epithelium which is like endothelium which is lying on a base basal lamina simple squamous endothelium lying on a basal lamina below the simple squamous epithelium you find subendothelial layer the subendothelial layer contains connective tissue and neurovascular structures after the subendothelial layer there is an internal elastic lamina before you get to tunica media. So those are the three parts of tunica intima. Simple squamous endothelium lying on a basement membrane, subendothelial layer containing connective tissue and neurovascular structure, and tunica internal elastic lamina before you get to tunica media. Tunica media contains concentric layers of smooth muscle cells. So they're concentric, they go around, they're circular. Smooth muscle cells, which are concentric, you can see they are spindle shaped with single nuclear that is central. So they're smooth muscle uh, cells, circular, and they are separated from tunica adventitia by external elastic lamina. Remember, between tunica intima and media, there was internal elastic lamina. Between media and adventitia, there's external elastic lamina. Then tunica adventitia is uh, comprises the connective tissue, so collagen and elastic fiber, as well as neurovascular structures. So the blood vessel, blood vessels are, are also have blood supply and innervation. So the vessels supplying the wall of the blood vessels are the vasa vasora, and the nerves supplying the blood vessels are the uh, vasa nervosa. So all these are on the tunica adventitia on the outer part. 
So this is your tunica intima. The dark line that you see here is the internal elastic lamina. So tunic, the simple squamous endothelium is not so clear here. So simple squamous endothelium lying on a basement membrane, followed by subendothelial layer and um, internal elastic lamina. So this dark line is the internal elastic lamina that separates it from tunica media made up of smooth muscle um, cells that are separated by thin connective tissue fibrillae before you get to external elastic lamina separating it to from tunica adventitia that contains connective tissue and neurovascular structures. So when you mention connective tissue, we mean collagen, elastic fibers, and fibroblasts that are producing these um, connective tissue fibers, okay? And of course, the neurovascular structures in the tunica adventitia. So we have different types of arteries. Remember, arteries carry blood away from the heart. So the types of arteries are based on the size. So number one, the large arteries. Large arteries are also referred to as elastic arteries. So large arteries sustain the fluctuating blood pressure, therefore they stabilize blood flow. They are able to sustain the fluctuating blood pressure, stabilizing the blood flow. So what are the features? You now know the feature of a blood vessel. So you just need to highlight um, what is what will make you identify a large artery. Okay, I describe the three layers and the contents. But what is so unique? Why do we call it large artery? Why do we call it elastic artery? So they have a thick tunica intima, and the elastic, uh, the tunica media is highly elastic. Remember, we said tunica media contains smooth muscle cells, but in large arteries, we call them elastic arteries because their tunica media has more elastic fiber than smooth muscle. Okay, has more elastic fiber. So, um, when you now elastic um, fibers they stay in dark that's why in this image you're able to identify internal elastic lamina and external elastic lamina because there's less elastic fibers in the tunica media tunica media is mostly smooth muscle cell from this image so we can pick the dark internal elastic lamina now when the um internal will have elastic fibers, which also stay in dark. So you'll have dark here, dark fibers, dark fibers. It means you'll not be able to distinguish which one is internal, which is media, which is why we say elastic arteries are highly elastic because their tunica media contain more elastic fiber. Therefore, you will not be able to visualize internal elastic lamina. Examples of large elastic arteries, you need to know the accurate examples for the purpose of your MCQ. You have the aorta, and its branches, mainly the brachiocephalic, at the trunk, subclavian artery, and pulmonary arteries. So the large arteries, iota, brachiocephalic trunk, subclavian, and pulmonary arteries, those are elastic arteries. Number two, muscular arteries. The main function of muscular arteries, they control affluence of blood to the organs, control the affluence of blood to the organs, and they have a prominent internal elastic lamina. The internal elastic lamina is visible, very visible. Why? Because the, the elastic fiber in them will stain dark. Then after that, the tunica media has is muscular with smooth muscle cells. So you can differentiate the dark elastic fiber from the smooth muscle cells that are not dark. So it muscular arteries have thick tunica media, mainly made up of smooth muscle cells, unlike elastic arteries, the large arteries that have mainly elastic fibers. Therefore, in muscular arteries, the internal elastic lamina is prominent. And like in um, elastic arteries where internal elastic lamina was not visible. So where do we find muscular arteries? Majority of the arteries actually are muscular arteries, like the radial artery, the coronary arteries to the heart, femoral artery on the lower limb, cerebral arteries of the brain. From arteries, blood goes to arterioles. So they will have tunica intima media adventitia as we described. Then lumen of arterioles are narrow. The subendothelial layer in the tunica intima is thin. And the tunica media has very few layers of smooth muscle cells. So those are the distinctive features of the arterioles. So this just shows you how large arteries look like. The tunica intima, that's how the tunica intima looks like. So you have simple squamous endothelial cells lying on a basement membrane. Okay, simple squamous, you can appreciate them there. And this is a subendothelial layer with collagen, elastic fibers, and fibroblasts that are scattered and a few smooth muscle cells in the subendothelium. Then when you go to the tunica media, you have a lot of elastic fibers in the tunica media of a large artery. These dark portions, 
okay these are elastic fibers so this makes it a large artery and in this case this is the aorta so tunica media has concentric bands they go around the lumen concentric bands of elastic fiber so these fibers are seen in between the few smooth muscle cells and collagen fibers around so these pink are the smooth muscle and collagen fibers but the dark ones are the elastic fibers so again this is a large artery so now we are on the tunica adventitia this is the tunica media so at the tunica adventitia you can now appreciate connective tissue fibers and fibroblasts as well as neurovascular structures so this is a nerve this is a vessel so you have connective tissue collagen elastic fibers fibroblasts and the upper pointer is showing you the vessels artery and a vein the artery has a thicker wall than a vein so this is um, the artery and the vein so these are the vasa vasorum the blood vessels that supply a blood vessel so blood vessel to this aorta is on on the its tunica adventitia then this lower pointer is showing you a nerve trunk so this is a vasa nervosa this is an electron microscopic um, illustration of the aorta so you can appreciate the thick elastic tunica um, media and the internal elastic lamina is staining pink so this is your internal elastic lamina it stains pink then the thick tunica media is the red layer and the rest of the tissue um, is a tunica adventitia so this is how an electron microscope protects them then we go to the muscular artery okay so you have a prominent internal elastic lamina because this we have abundant smooth muscle cell lamina so it's very prominent and the elastic lamina external one is thin okay but the internal is very prominent then again in the muscular artery the tunica intima okay um is thinner than that of large arteries then you find few smooth muscle cells and less elastic tissue and the internal elastic lamina is very prominent so those are the what how you describe a muscular artery when you come to the tunica media you see concentric um, um, smooth muscles okay and a bit of fibroblasts and connective tissue so there is connective tissue in basically all the layers then tunica adventitia you'll appreciate collagen uh, fibroblasts elastic fibers and before then external elastic lamina separates it from the tunica media then this shows you an arterial with the tunica intima having an endothelium of simple squamous and a thin internal elastic lamina then there is narrow tunica media this is tunica media three to four layers of the smooth muscle of smooth muscle cell then adventitia with connective tissue so in arterials there is really no external elastic lamina then capillaries this is where exchange of metabolites um, occurs so i will discuss the capillaries on a separate um, um, lecture because it's slightly longer 